Welcome back. Don't forget cell phones, identification before your question, no flash photography allowed. This will be 12 minutes for Illinois, 10 minutes for Duquesne. And I have some notes here from the game that just finished. Fighting line I have now won six straight games, improved to 28 and eight, and advancing to the NCAA Sweet 16 for the first time since 2005, when it went on to play in the national championship game against North Carolina in St. Louis. This is the school's ninth Sweet 16 appearance. Illinois will face Iowa State in the semifinal round of the East Regional next Thursday in Boston. Brad Underwood now has a six and seven career record in this tournament. Illinois is three and one now all time against Duquesne. This is the first meeting of the two schools since December 9th, 1988. Funny line I are with us. As mentioned, they're going to play Iowa State Thursday in Boston. We have the head coach Brad Underwood with us, along with Marcus Damask and Coleman Hawkins. We're going to ask Brad to start off with a statement on this game, then we'll go to questions for all three of the Illini on the dais. Brad, please. I'm still trying to get the water out of my ear um, from from post game, but um, it, what a uh, what a great start to the ball game. Um, I thought that uh, uh, I have so much respect for Keith Ambrot. Uh, what an unbelievable career. Uh, what a way for him to end, his, end it. Um, great win against BYU. Very, very talented team. I think they'd won nine in a row and maybe 16 or 17 out of 19 or 20 to end the season. Um, but uh, these two guys, um, Boy, they made a difference on the defensive side to start the game. Uh, they're two terrific guards I thought we did a good job on. And then we got out in transition. And when we get stops and rebound, um, we can be pretty special. So um, just kind of continued um, 
boom, lackadaisical to start the second half, letting them have three or four threes. But uh, uh, for the most part, uh, you know, we got Marcus going in booty ball. Um, <clears throat> you know, Coleman got us off to an elite start with his threes. And, uh, you know, Terrence, those three guys, uh, you know, pretty special, pretty special players. Start right here in the front row, Gina. Then there's one also on the left here. Go. Jeremy Werner on Enquirer. Brad, you said yesterday to ask you, what does it mean to get this monkey off your back, the program, and get to a Sweet 16, get to that next step? Well, it's never been on my back. You guys, you guys have made that. These guys don't know anything about any of that. I, and, and I treat every team independently. Uh, I think for the program's sake, it's, it's mind-blowing to me. Um, and I think there's frustration that we had a one seed and, and got upset in this very game. But um, uh, this program's elite. And to, to not be there in 18 or 19 years, uh, to me, that's more mind-numbing. We had tough draws and a couple injuries, and, and, and you get beat. And, and that's the beauty of March Madness. But uh, uh, it feels good to be advancing with this group. I've said all along, this is one of my favorite teams to coach. Uh, if not the favorite, and, and uh, so, yeah, on to Boston. Yeah, Abby. Abby. Abby Schnabel, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Uh, Coach Underwood, I noticed you had a moment with Keith Dambra at the end of the game where you stopped and chatted with him. I was wondering if you'd be willing to let us in what you said to him um, and just what that moment was. I've known Keith for a long time and, and uh, um, done clinics with him. Um, so much respect for him as a coach, so much respect for his accomplishments, what he's done. He's always found winning. Winning's really, really hard to do. Um, no matter the stops along the way, uh, whether at the high school level, whether at Akron, um, and then obviously here at, du here at Duquesne. Um, just to, you know, coaching's a pretty small fraternity and, and, and really, really good guy. And, and, and you, you pull for the good guys. And for him to, to uh, be able to go out and do it on his terms and, and have this run is, is pretty special. Right here in front, gentlemen. This question is for Brad. This is a Brad Teak, CSM Sports. Uh, Brad, the, the team got onto a really hot start. What was just the message uh, to the team in this game today? We talked about it. These guys made it a point. You know, it wasn't very much fun being down nine to nothing in a minute and a half. Um, you know, I, I can. I'm to the point where anymore I don't have to say a lot. These guys, these guys are grown men. They're, they're, and they care. And 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 sometimes they care too much. But um, yeah, they they made a point to it. We talked about it. You know, we had to get off to a better start. We couldn't let this team get some confidence coming off their BYU game, and we needed to, um, you know, we needed to make a statement. Left side, gentlemen. Steve Greenberg, Chicago Sun-Times. Uh, I'd like to hear from Brad and Coleman on this. Um, when do seeds go out the window? You're a three, you're gonna play a higher seed next for the right to play, potentially the highest seed after that. Do these seeds matter anymore? No. Coleman, you're first, please. Oh, uh, I feel like the seeds don't matter as soon as the ball is tipped in that first round. Uh, uh, I feel like that's evident every year. I feel like um, as soon as the ball is tipped, anybody can beat anybody. Um, you know, whatever team plays the hardest. Um, you know, and it's a it's an imperfect game, and to to try to base it off of seeds is 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 kind of bizarre because um, the you know there's so many great players that play in the tournament, so many great teams, um, and all of them are are chasing that one common goal, and um, everyone's going to compete extra hard. So. Um, I feel like the season's out the window in, in that first round, really. It's, it's game on. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I've been a 14-1. and one. Um, I've been a 12-1. and one. Uh, I've been a 1 and lost. Um, I, you know, I think it's, it's, it's more about how you're playing. I think it's about the matchup. Um, I think it's, it's, it's uh, uh, so many little factors that go involved. I think it's what makes this... March Madness so unique is, you know, we've 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 now seen 16s beat ones um, in, in this thing. So, uh, you know, our task is we've got we've got in front of us a, a team that was seated higher than us. 
um, okay, we've played in the Big Ten. We've played some of the very best teams that, that the basketball has to offer. We've played a great schedule. Uh, we've been on the road. Um, so, you know, that's what you do all those things for is to prepare yourselves for these moments. Hold on a sec. Steve, do you have a, 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 another comment for that? Let's, let's go to back to him, and then we'll go to the front. So do you guys feel like underdogs now, you know, going against the two? I mean, according to the bracket, you know, that's how people look at it. Do you feel like that? With Mar these? We'll go Marcus and uh, Brad this time. Um, I mean, every time we step on the court, I don't ever feel like an underdog, you know, no matter who we're playing. I think with this group of guys, we can always go out and beat anyone in the country. So, I mean, I'm really not looking at the seeds. I'm looking at Iowa State, who they have, and, and how we're going to win. Same. I, you know, it, it's, every game's in. It's, when you've got a group that's veteran, when you've got a group that's old, they know, how, they know each other, they know how to play. I, I don't ever go in. I go in. With a with a feeling that of, of respect for the opponent and how good they are and what they do, but I never go in with the mindset that 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 oh, we got no chance. Maybe if we were playing the Celtics or somebody in Boston, I might I might feel a little different. But uh, you know, we we've we've shown we can play with the best. We're under four minutes to go. We have four questions up. Here's one, two, three in the back, and Abby four. Go. Um, so just what is funny, you come in up. So you've been a foundational piece for the program. Just kind of walk us through just how you're feeling in this moment. Um, part of me wants to get, like, really excited. Uh, and part of me just, like, wants to keep the jobs not finished mindset. So it's just kind of in between right now. Um, I'm really happy for everything we've accomplished this year. Um, but to sit here and say I'm, I'm happy with making the Sweet 16 is – you know, it's, it's not what I want to say. I want to be happy with winning a national championship. So, um, you know, I, I'm aware of the history because it, it kind of gets thrown in our face a little bit. But, uh, um, you know, I, I think the, the goal now is to really go out and do it and, you know, uh, become national championships because that's why we're here. So. Uh, here. Thank you. This is for Marcus and Coleman. You guys have won six straight games now in the postseason. How do you feel going into Boston about your team and what gives you confidence that you can compete for a national championship? Marcus, you're first, please. Uh, I feel good about our team. You know, I think we're hitting our stride and, and turning in the right direction. You know, you always want to start playing your best basketball come March, and I, I think we're doing that. So, you know, I feel confident. You know, Iowa State's a really good team, so we got to play our best to beat them. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel really confident in this team because I feel like there's still something missing that we haven't reached yet. Uh, I think there's a whole other level of intensity that we can play with, um, both offensively and defensively. I feel like um, there's there's moments where, you know, guys got to step up and knock down shots, and uh, that's that's on me. Um, and there's moments where we got to step up and lock in on defense and, and limit defensive mistakes. So. Uh, I'm really confident in this team because, like I said, I, I feel like we got a whole nother level we can tap into for sure. In the back, gentlemen. Uh, I'd, I'd love to hear from both Coach and Marcus, if possible, here. For Coach, I, a lot of people say this is a guards tournament. So just how important is it to have Marcus, you know, being the engine of this offense? And was that a point of emphasis to go out and get a guy like him in the offseason? And then for Marcus, just how much pride do you take in making this offense go? Yeah, I, I think that we had a lot of ideas when we recruited Marcus. We knew how good a player he was. And uh, uh, between Marcus and Ty, uh, Nico Moretti, we, I've said all along, I felt like our point guard uh, position was in, in great hands. And, and Coleman gives us an unbelievable luxury as a five man who can really handle and, and, and um, elite pressure. So it's not a, it wasn't about having that position it was about taking being able to put guys in position to take advantage of mismatches and put them in positions to be successful and uh, uh, Marcus's basketball IQ Ty's basketball IQ Coleman's basketball IQ those allow us to be able to get away with quote unquote if you guys want to label it the non-traditional point guard he's as much a point guard as anybody that's that's in this field um, you know and the triple double last game proved that can you remind me what my question was? 
Just how much pride you take in making this offense one of the best offense, best offenses in the country go the way it does. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't really consider myself like the engine of the offense. I think that's what you said. Um, when you play along guys like, you know, Coleman, Terrence, and the list goes on and on, you know, we just get the ball to where we want to get it to. Uh, you know, some days that's me, some days that's Cole, some days that's TJ. You know, it's just, you know, we're just out there playing basketball, really. And I think uh, Coach has done a really good job of just getting the ball to where it needs to and allowing us to use our strengths. And I think that's why our offense is so successful because we just, everyone uses their strengths really well. Final question right here, Abby. Marcus and Coleman, um, I'm curious to know what you guys think you did so well against Day Day Grant. You held him to seven points. Not a lot of players this season have been able to do that. Coleman, uh, yeah, Coleman first, please. Uh, I think it was our, our physicality as well as forcing tough twos. Uh, we try to keep everything two on two. Uh, we try to war over ball screens and uh, to see gar uh, our guards, uh, Marcus, Ty, everybody, you know, take a crack at him. Uh, Terrence, everybody. Um, uh, it, it was exciting to see because uh, obviously we made it tough. Um, and just limiting, limiting threes, uh, crawling up in, in, uh, in his space uh, rather than letting him uh, create with the ball and create his own shots. Um, so I think we did a good job of just forcing tough twos and sticking to what we do. Yeah, I think uh, just our, our size and physicality is something that, you know, they don't they probably haven't seen before, you know, between TJ and Ty, you know, that duo on the ball, just the whole game guarding you, it, it wears on you. Thank you, gentlemen, and best of luck next weekend. Thank you. Duquesne Dukes are with us. Head coach Keith Dambrot, Jimmy Clark III, Day Day Grant. We're going to ask Keith to make a statement on this game, and then we'll go to questions for all three gentlemen on this dais. Keith, please. Well, hats off to Illinois. I thought they played well. Um, we couldn't quite get our feet underneath us to guard them well enough to, to be in the game. 
It was actually a typical offensive game for us, but a little atypical defensively. And, you know, some of the things they do are a little bit different than what we've seen most of the year. We had trouble just guarding the ball, which uh, ultimately was our undoing. Questions? Start with Abby. Thank you. Keith, can you walk us through those final moments of, you know, your last game of your coaching career and just what's going through your head? Uh, it wasn't quite the way I wish it would end, but uh, one thing I know in life, you know, after being here almost 66 years is that you have to take the good with the bad and you have to, you know, you have to rally yourself back when things don't go well. Um, but what's remarkable to me is just the, the, the fan support from Duquesne. You know, we were laughing in the locker room. Um, you know, when we first got there, we couldn't get 10 people to come to the game. And look at all those people that came out last, you know, for this. So I know my dad will be pleased about that wherever he is right now. So uh, that, to me, like we've, we've set the the foundation for great things to come in the future for, for Duquesne basketball, for Pittsburgh basketball. And, you know, uh, really didn't matter what the score was. I mean, uh, it's irrelevant because we've, we've laid a good foundation for Duquesne to be a good program in the future. Right here in front, Gina, thank you. Keith, Zach Weiss, Pittsburgh Sports Now. Just emotionally, I know you're still processing. Just what's the emotional wheel for you now? And to both of you, just how do you feel just being able to send Keith out in a winning way like this with reshaping this program? Let's go with Jimmy, Day Day, and then back to the head coach. Um, just, I feel blessed, you know, just to have, have him as a coach, you know, him as, my, as a player on my team. So just going out like that, with the way that we did, I can't do nothing but feel accomplished, especially the way we started with the season coming in at 0-5. So I don't feel nothing but blessed and, you know, just proud of my guys and just being a part of this. I just feel happy to be a part of it. I would agree. Um, this is an unbelievable accomplishment for the three of us to have gone out on a note of winning the A-10 championship and being able to get uh, that history uh, blocker off, which was winning that BYU game and winning that tournament game as well. So um, it's just a blessing and high appreciation and trying to just um, let the sting, uh, stinger go away right now after these couple last couple hours. I mean, this is it for me. So like I told these guys, I said, don't forget about me. I need somebody to go watch next year. So I'm going to go watch all my guys that are still playing and you know, spend time with them and figure out what I'm gonna do next. You know, get my wife healthy first and then go from there. But I, you know, I was just thankful to be around a bunch of guys that never quit. And I, I just, just to see the brotherhood like really grow and see these guys do anything for anybody. And like people don't, like Day Day in the middle, you know, at the very end, he said, hey, Make sure you get those guys in the game. Get him. He didn't say put me back in. He said, make sure you know this guy gets in and he gets in. Like that tells you a lot about what kind of person he is. And all of them are like that. They're just great guys. Left hand side, gentlemen. Uh, Tim Bench from Duquesne Radio and from Pittsburgh Tribune Review, Trib Live. Uh, Day Day and Jimmy, for you guys, what's it going to be like for you to know that there is a banner hanging? at the UPMC Cooper Fieldhouse, because Drew Joyce talked to us about that on the radio, that this being what it is, you lost Illinois, but there's going to be a banner because of you guys. What does that mean to you two? And Keith, this might be a tactical question, but um, in terms of the game tonight against Illinois, I know you take great pride in never having anybody speed you up. Did they speed you up to a degree that you didn't like tonight? Well, let's have the student athletes speak first. Day Day, you're first. Jimmy, second. Well, um, just like Coach Drew said, um, I think it's just a, it's a blessing. Not many people can do that. And a high appreciation to all the guys, my brothers, the coaching staff, and um, just all of us, everybody who was with us from the jump since we were 0-5 starting the conference of uh, that accomplishment and that success. Um, 
that's that's just a blessing to be able to have that banner hung up, and not many people can do that and have have been in a position that we've been in these these last few weeks and even a couple months. Yeah, I have to say the same. It's just just being able to to say you were gonna do something and then see it happen out. It was just good to see that, especially with these guys. So you know me, I'm always gonna tell the truth. So he's a Bob Huggins disciple and they just bullied us a little bit tonight. And then we got a little frazzled and unraveled and we had trouble with their physicality and their quickness. Um, but I think if we played again, we'd, be, we'd play better. I just don't think that we were, you know, quite ready for the quickness level and the strength. You know, Shannon's one of the strongest guys in the country going to the basket. If you watch tape on him, he, he did the same thing in the Big Ten in the last five, six games. He's just putting his head down and getting there. And, you know, he's getting there quickly, you know. And, uh, you know, so I think they sped us up, but I think they, they, were, they were physical, which most Big Ten teams are. We're under three minutes to go. We have two questions up. Go. J.D. and Jimmy, can you just try and put into words the impact Coach Dambrot has had on you guys as individuals? Jimmy, you're first, please. Um, it's hard, you know, especially coming in from, from JUCO, already playing in the A-10. It was, it was good for me, you know, especially having a coach like this to just stay on me, a guy that's going to tell you the truth whenever. So just having that in my life, especially playing with this team, it, I feel like it helped me grow as a person and a basketball player. So just being able to describe it in words, I can't really describe it in words right now, but I'm definitely grateful for it for sure. Just piggybacking and agreeing with Jimmy says because coach uh, coached us similarly. Um, me and coach's uh, relationship grew, and um, it grew as well on the court um, because we had a meeting earlier in the season, and I was basically asked to be coached harder. And um, coach took the initiative as well as the other staff, and they they did that, and I accepted that challenge. But um, before then. Um, that wasn't the case and um, our relationship wasn't as balanced. And I think after that time that um, coach was starting to coach me harder, that uh, our relationship just grew and I just became a lot much more appreciative just to have him as a coach, just to be under his wing, learn more, um, rather it's off the court or on the court things, just to make me a better man. Uh, Hunter Hensel, A-10 Talk. Uh, this is for Trey and Dede. So both of you guys started your college careers off at different schools, but closed it out at Duquesne on this run. Uh, so just when you're looking back on this in the future, what will you think about Duquesne and what does Duquesne mean to you? Dede, lead us off, please. To be honest, uh, speaking from a duo standpoint, um, me and, me and Jimmy's du duo, it, it's going to go a long way. It's going to be my brother forever. Um, we have so many similarities and uh, so many things that we're alike, and we can hold each other accountable in any hostile or adverse situation. So um, just, just speaking on that, man, we can, we can look back and, and we can look back at the success and just be like, dang, like, we really did it. We turned things around. We could say whatever we like as far as a positive manner. But we're, we're the type of young, young, humble young men to where we would just continue to try to find things we can work on rather than looking back at just the success all the time. Yeah, I'll have to say the same. You know, uh, we, we talk about the sport a lot. We talk about life a lot. So just being able to accomplish what we did here and probably a few years from now, just looking back on it, we probably going to say we could have did certain things better or what we could have did. But more than all, we're just going to remember all the memories that we had, especially with our teammates. So just being able, being able to come here and complete what we did, even though we wanted to go further, it was just a blessing. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Best of luck. And Keith, Godspeed. Appreciate you. Thank you.
Great job. Appreciate it. Great job. You as well. You yes. We made a good team and we made it work. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. It was great. Take yours. Oh, I, I usually do. Yes, no one else needs it.